Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. Our first story of the day is by valuable nobody 908 entitled parent demands a password to my grades. Little bit of backstory, the story revolves around me, 17 year old female, and my mom, 36 year old female, who I will call entitled mother. Entitled mother and my dad went their separate ways when I was very little. They weren't married and I went to live with my grandparents on my dad's side. Entitled mother would sometimes spend a few days with us and then go who knows where. Around two years ago, she left and didn't come back. I see her maybe once a month. In my country, we have a website that shows your grades, exams, and stuff like that. You have your email and a password. I never gave Entitled Mother my password because she never asked for it, and I didn't think she even needs to see my grades. No one except me has my password. So I was doing my homework, and I got a call from Entitled Mother. That's rare, so I picked it up. This is approximately the conversation. Entitled Mother says, Hey OP, how are you? I say, Good, what about you? They say, A little bit tired, but fine. I say, Good to hear. Do you need anything? She says, Well, I just wanted to know how you are and ask you to give me your password to your grades. I say, What? Why? She says, I lost the password I had, so can you give it to me again? I say, What are you talking about? Why do you have my password? She says, well, you typed it in my phone once years ago when it stayed there. I changed my phone, so I need you to give it again. I say, no, you will not have my password. That's my personal information, and I don't feel comfortable by you looking at my grades and exams. She says, oh, come on, it's just grades, and besides, I'm your mom. I have the right to see your grades. It's not that big of a deal. I say, it is. You can't look at my grades. It's my personal information and I don't want you anywhere near it. And besides, you aren't really a good mom to begin with. She says, oh, are we going there now? Well, you shouldn't complain that much. After all, I live the life you wanted to have. I say, a life I wanted? Are you nuts? I can't believe you'd say that to a minor. Do you hear yourself? Are you crazy? She says, why are you yelling? If it's about your grades... I say this is not about my grades. This is about my private information that you have no right to. You are a bad parent and I'm so ashamed to be related to you. I'm going to change the password and goodbye. I stopped the call then and I changed my password right away. This type of conversation is not unusual for her, but she really made me mad. That's all, I just wanted to share my story. Do you guys think it's particularly suspicious or weird that OP's mom, who's not very involved in OP's life seemingly, wants access to their grades for some reason or their password to their grades? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Ari Merkwood, Ruining Your Daughter's Make-A-Wish This happened a long time ago. I was helping a girl who had terminal cancer with her final preparations and wishes. She had requested to go on a cruise with her family and the Make-A-Wish program was happy to help her. She was really sweet and we soon formed a friendship. The day she was about to formally request her wish, she looked really sad and didn't want to talk to anyone. I visited her and asked what's wrong, but she wouldn't tell me. It broke my heart to see her tearing up. Thankfully, after some time, she told me that she didn't want a cruise. She hated it. She wanted to meet her dream celebrity like she's seen other kids do. I told her no problem, I'll speak so we can find the celebrity she wanted, but she said not to because her mother had screamed at her when she first said she wanted to meet the celebrity. Her mother told her to forget about her final wish and ask for a cruise for all the family because that's something the entire family can do and it's something the mother wanted since she was a child. I was speechless and furious. Even now, I can't understand why a mother would get in the way of her daughter's final wish. It took me a while, but I calmed her down and told her that it was her wish, not her mother's, and that I wanted her to be truly happy. She told me she always did what her mother asked, and the idea of doing something she wanted was foreign to her, but she smiled. The biggest smile I'd seen on her, and hugged me and said she'll speak to her mother and get the celebrity she wanted. Sadly, I had to leave for the day but I was happy I was able to convince her. Unfortunately, the talk with the mom did not go too well and she ended up requesting the cruise. Last time we spoke, she told me she tried but did not want to make her family sad, but that she wished so hard to meet the celebrity instead. 
I told her she will meet him someday and that she was an angel and not to worry, that the cruise will be amazing and she will be treated like a princess. We hugged, said goodbye. She said she was really happy to have met me, that I visited her when no one else would. Her mother had two other children and never went to visit her, and that she always looked forward to my visits because I did not talk about her cancer but made her laugh. It was a very hard day. The point of the story is, if you're a parent reading this, please listen to your child. Don't take away from their final wish. Make sure they're happy because every second is precious. I just can't imagine being so heartless that when your own child tells you that they have a very specific wish that they want to meet somebody, you downplay that and try and convince them that you want something for yourself instead. It's things like these that make you lose a little bit of faith in humanity. This next story is by Toot Puff. Karen expects six-year-old to pay $100 for her son's stupidity. This was when I was about six or seven. My friend, who will name Austin, and his mother, Karen, never acted out before, so I was surprised when this happened. Austin and I were not great friends, but we hung out a little. One day at school, he and I were playing on the playground. All of a sudden, he fell with a loud thud. I was about two meters away from him and ran to help him up. He was in immense pain, so his mother, Karen, was called. She took him to the hospital or some crap, but I don't know, and turns out, he broke his freaking arm. I was the only one who saw this, so no one else could confirm. Apparently, he told his mother and teacher that I broke his arm. What the freak? His mother then called my parents and said I had to pay her $100. My mother and father trusted me and declined. She then said she would sue me. Me, a six-year-old. See you in court was apparently all her vocabulary was. Fortunately, no court would take her case. Duh. Austin was hated by the whole class after that. Happy ending. I don't even know if in retrospect that is a happy ending. Maybe for OP it feels a little justified, but like, I feel like the whole thing kind of just stinks in general. Like weird lying and then having to be hated by the entire class after that. This whole story's embodiment is like nothing but non-stop question marks just floating around in space. And our final story of the day is by Peppa's character arc. My entitled sister tells me to just get a grip that my father died because I wouldn't let my nephew play with my 3DS. This was when I was around 16 years old. Nine years ago, when I was 11, my dad went missing. He used to visit every Saturday and just stopped. It wasn't until a few weeks when an officer came to our door and told us my dad was found dead in his apartment after having an epileptic seizure. Why is this important, I hear you ask? Because I only ever had one photo of just him and me, and it's a photo I'd always cherished. I had gotten my mom to take the photo with us with the DSXL I had gotten for my 10th birthday, and she did. I didn't have an SD card at the time, and the photo was just in the system storage. The photo meant a lot to me, and I was always careful with my DS after that. Well, I was careful up until I was 16. Entitled Big Sis dropped off Entitled Nephew at my mom's house while she was at work. Unbeknownst to me, he wasn't allowed to use his tablet because he'd been naughty at home and was being punished. Of course, my mom didn't tell me any of this. Entitled Nephew came upstairs to play with Little Sis, and I closed my door and started to play on my PlayStation. About 10 minutes pass, and I get a knock at my door. Entitled Nephew says, Uncle OP, can I play with your DS because I'm bored and want to play Mario with Little Sis? And I say alright. I take out my Pokemon cartridge and put on my new Super Mario Bros. If you remember Luigi Poker, then it's that game. And handed my DS to my nephew. It wasn't uncommon for him to ask, and I was used to handing it to him. Over the next hour and a half, I hear little sister and entitled nephew laughing and joking, having a grand old time when all of a sudden, I heard entitled nephew yell and heard a loud crack. I didn't think anything of it because my nephew had a habit of sitting in my sister's wardrobe which had a broken leg and would make a crack whenever he sat in it. An hour passes where I hear my door open and it's my little sister. She says, um, OP, I have something to tell you and please don't be mad. I say, sure, what's up? She says, well, Entitled Nephew kept losing in the Mario game and out of anger he threw your DS. 
I assumed she meant threw it on the floor. I say, he's thrown it before, it'll probably be fine. Did it hit the carpet or the cushions or what? She says, that's the thing, he threw it at the wall. I say, he did what? I asked her to bring me my DS and she hurried into her room and brought it to me. It didn't look too bad until I opened it. The top screen was cracked and none of the buttons worked, including the power button, making it so I couldn't even turn it off. I got very upset and went straight downstairs to my mom and told her what happened. She got mad because he wasn't even supposed to be on it and said she'll see if she can get it fixed. Unfortunately, she couldn't get it fixed and she knew I was heartbroken, as I couldn't get back that photo of my dad and me. Entitled Big Sis came to pick up Entitled Nephew and saw me crying holding my broken DS, desperately trying to access the photo to no avail. Entitled Big Sis said, What the freak happened to OP? Mom said he lent Entitled Nephew his DS to play Mario and then Entitled Nephew threw it at the wall. Entitled Big Sis was apologetic and bought me a 3DS to compensate, to which I told her it's not about the DS. I had photos of family members that had passed on on there. I had some of my granddad and my past pets, but most importantly, this lost me the one photo of my dad I held the most dear, and that no amount of money or new DSs could make up for the lost memories. She was very apologetic, but our story's not over yet. The second part of this story is from when I was 17, so about one year after Entitled Nephew broke my DS. I had a new 3DS and my mom and me played games from time to time. Entitled Big Sister dropped off Entitled Nephew again while she went to work and he saw me playing my 3DS with my mom. He said, Uncle OP, can I play your 3DS with little sister please? I said no. He said, but that's not fair, you always get to play it and I never do, you're selfish. I said, I always get to play it because it's my 3DS, and I'm not going to let you touch it after what you did to my last one. My mom agreed with me, and then Entitled Nephew cried for a bit until my mom gave him her phone to shut him up. No less than 30 minutes later, Entitled Big Sister comes in and shouts, Where is my son? My mom was confused and asked her why, to which my Entitled Big Sister screams at her that she has no right to call Entitled Nephew a menace and a terror, and she demanded that I give him the 3DS that she paid for because she did me a favor buying me a new one after Entitled Nephew broke my original one. Entitled Nephew walks in with a poop-eating grin on his face and throws my mom's phone at her, where it became apparent Entitled Nephew had rang my sister and cried that we were being horrible to him. I start to tell her that I won't let him play with my 3DS, because the last time I did, he broke it and I lost the last photo of my dad that I had ever taken. Entitled Big Sister slaps me round the face and says I have no right to tell her son no, especially because I bully him, and also call him the N-word. My nephew was mixed race, and at the time didn't know what the N-word was, but heard the adults talked about how bad of a word it was, and just assumed it was another swear. I get upset and scream back at her that I didn't say anything to her little crap of a child, except that I didn't want him to play with my DS, because he broke my last one. She said, Oh, stop being a baby. It was over a year ago and your dad died six years ago. He wasn't even a good dad. He drank a lot and deserved what happened. Get a grip. At that point, my mom lost it and was crying. She said that entitled big sister had no right to hit me and that was a despicable thing to say about my dad and that she doesn't know how hurt I am because entitled big sister still has her dad. My older siblings have different parents to me and little sister. She then said to take Entitled Nephew and get the freak out of her house. Entitled Big Sister says, But you have to look after Entitled Nephew, I need to go to work. Mom says, You should have thought about that before smacking my son around the face and insulting his father. Entitled Big Sister says, It's only a photo. Honestly, I was telling Entitled Big Sister's best friend about how much of a crybaby OP is. Who cries over losing a photo? My mom says, and with that, you're going to have to find someone else to look after your entitled nephew. She kicked entitled big sister out of the house and burst into tears. It was then she let me know why I could only see my dad on weekends. She loved him, but he was a drinker, and the drinking set off his epilepsy, and she didn't want me and little sister from seeing him having a seizure while smelling of alcohol. 
but wanted him to be in our life, but couldn't deal with the drinking side of him. She also told me how she always felt bad about her decision to not let him stay with us because he was such a good dad and felt that if she had let him stay, it would have been different. Entitled Big Sister continued to ring and try and drop Entitled Nephew off at Mum's house, but she always refused and was always calling her a selfish runt. Entitled Big Sister went as far as telling her friends that my mom abused me and my little sister. Obviously, social services got involved and it upset my mom. Eventually, she rang Entitled Big Sister's dad and also contacted my two older brothers to talk some sense into her. According to my older brother, she kept blaming my mom in being a bad grandmother and that's why Entitled Nephew was the way he was. Things cooled down eventually and Entitled Big Sister apologized. None of the family talk about it, but whenever my big sister sees me playing my 3DS, she immediately grabs Entitled Nephew and leaves. I definitely don't know if there's been too many stories of somebody being more entitled than this one. I'll tell you what, the stories today have been heavy. People like this just get me fired up, man. It sounds so vile that you imagine it's more like a screenplay villain, not somebody that actually does that kind of stuff. If anything, the one thing I take away from all these stories is treat your family well. Treat them the way you want to be treated, keep them close, and just cherish the good things that they do. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today, so if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like, and if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So, until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.